setting it. It's getting so quiet. I'd like to have Nadine Hogan come up here. Prior to the start of our city council meeting, we occasionally get the opportunity to recognize one of our citizens, and you need to get right up here in the center, Nadine. Oh, right. <laughs> Uh, we have a citizen here to, uh, to recognize for exemplary service recognition. And whereas Nadine Hogate has filled a long-term and productive citizen advisory role in the city of Des Moines citizen participation process through her 21-year appointment to the Des Moines Neighborhood Revitalization Board, advocating for and encouraging resident involvement to support neighborhood improvements in Des Moines. And whereas on February 19, 1990, the Des Moines City Council approved the Housing Improvement and Neighborhood Revitalization Program and launched <coughs> an innovative public-private partnership in six project areas that would involve neighborhood residents working with city staff to develop neighborhood action plans that targeted public and private funds for street improvements, new affordable housing, and home improvements for low and moderate income families. And whereas on March 26, 1990, Nadine Hogate was appointed to serve on the Neighborhood Advisory Board as a representative for the low to moderate income neighborhoods in the fourth ward of the city. <coughs> and in her capacity as a board member, she frequently served as the chair, held other offices, and served on numerous subcommittees during her tenure for the purpose of furthering affordable housing, clean and safe neighborhoods, and to ensure that residents have a say in how their neighborhoods are developed and maintained. And therefore, be it resolved that in appreciation of her dedicated service to the community, her steadfast engagement with neighborhood organizations citywide, and her genuine interest in improving the quality of life for residents, young and old, in our city, the city recognizes Nadine Hogate is an exemplary citizen of Des Moines, and for the range of her community involvement is a reminder to all of our residents of our obligation to be proactive in making sure Des Moines remains a place where all residents can enjoy the quality of life they see. And for that, not only do we have this, but maybe we have a key to the <laughs> I did want to say a couple of things. You know, I didn't come in this thing to to, to be whoopee whoopee. I came in it because because you define whoopee whoopee. <laughs> because the value of my house was in the crapper. 
And I said, somebody's got to do something. And since this is my own little piece of Des Moines here, I guess I better do it. And I guess all of you got on board and decided the same thing, that we had a, we had a job to do. We have had wonderful support from Polk County supervisors and from the Des Moines uh, City Council and, and a manager who managed to keep us, out, keep us going and not get, where'd he go? Keep up the good work, kids. I'm, I'm going to be still be messing around out in my neighborhood, but you, the neighbors, the whole network of, of people in the city of Des Moines who gave their time, gave their money, gave their sweat and their tears, look at what the city we've got. Look at this town. Isn't this a wonderful town? We're, we're one of a kind. In, in, in the United States, and, and we know it. Let's keep it that way. Human Rights uh, Month, and I'd like to have uh, Rudy Sims quickly come up and tell us what's going on this month, and then we've got a proclamation. Thank you, Mayor. This Saturday, December 10th, will mark the 63rd International Human Rights Day, uh, and our celebration in Des Moines is scheduled to take place at the Iowa State Historical Building. Being on a Saturday for a change gives us an opportunity to have a more expansive program of entertainment, dance, music, arts, um, education is a part of that as well. There are some handouts and a schedule of events uh, right here in the uh, council chambers will be posted outside. Uh, Please take a handbill uh, if you're interested, and we hope that uh, you'll turn out. Uh, the mayor, of course, will be introducing the governor, as well as participating in the social group. Uh, a very Thank you. That's group. enough. That's enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, there, but the program will be kicked off at 10 o'clock with the lion dance. Uh, then you'll hear from the mayor. Um, but throughout the afternoon, throughout the day, throughout part of the afternoon until 2 p.m. A wonderful, entertaining, family-focused activity is planned. So please join us. All right, Rudy. Uh, quickly, we have a proclamation that recognizes uh, this event and its creation. Whereas on December 10th, 1948, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was proclaimed and adopted by the General Assembly of the United Nations. And whereas the City of Des Moines established the Des Moines Human Rights Commission in 1954 to protect the people of Des Moines from unfair treatment in employment, housing, public accommodation, and municipal practices. And whereas the theme of International Human Rights Day 2011 is awareness through strength of voice. And whereas the 57 years of citizens of Des Moines have had and do continue to show compassion and concern for the rights of others different from themselves. And some human rights defenders are famous, but most are not. They are active in our community, working along and in groups. And whereas Human Rights Day 2011 will salute the achievements of human rights defenders and emphasize the primary role government plays in enabling and promoting human rights. And whereas the anniversary of the International Declaration of Human Rights is an occasion for all of us to recommit to the vision of universal human rights, which remains as relevant today as it was 63 years ago. And whereas Des Moines city leaders continue to recognize the need for appreciation of diversity and protection of fair treatment for all citizens and people at all times. And now, therefore, I, the mayor, uh, along with the Des Moines City Council, express our continued commitment 
to living out the principles of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in our community and do hereby proclaim the month of December 2011 as Human Rights Month and December 10, 2011 as Human Rights Day. Rudy, thank you and keep up the great work. Action Agency, which serves low-income residents of the city of Des Moines, is taking donations from people in the community, schools, businesses, churches, to sort or to pack or for a thousand food baskets for the holiday. Each of the food baskets contains a three to five day supply of nutritious food for each household. I brought with me um, Shannon Bills and Barb Hildebrand, who are um, Des Moines Community Action staff, who are managing the program from the Pastoral Center at 6th and Grand. I'd also like to thank each of the directors of city departments for their assistance with staff and um, other things to help us with this program. And our thanks go out to the community who have donated <coughs> food for the program. All right. We have a uh, um, proclamation quickly. The uh, holiday season is an opportunity for Des Moines residents to share their good fortune with neighbors who are less fortunate. And whereas as families gather for the holidays, meals are an important part of the family celebrations. And whereas the city of Des Moines wishes to help as many families as possible to enjoy nutritious food during the holiday season, and whereas the city of Des Moines will conduct the holiday food program and encourage all Des Moines residents to contribute to this effort and to provide eligible families with nutritious food for the holiday season. And whereas the City of Des Moines wishes to express gratitude to all those contributing to the success of this program and making our city a caring and responsive community. Now therefore, I the Mayor on behalf of the City Council and the citizens of Des Moines do hereby proclaim December 5th to 16th, 2011, is Holiday Food Baskets Weeks, and I urge all of our citizens to join in this worthy effort. Thank you so much for all your work. <laughs>
we're going to open the meeting for the uh, Municipal Housing Agency Governing Board. Uh, I will ask the uh, clerk to take the roll, please. Here. Coleman. Here. Moore. Here. Grease. Here. Mahaffey. Here. Hensley. Here. Meyer. Here. We have a quorum. Item two is uh, approving the utility allowance schedules for the public housing in section eight is board communication number 11-743. Is there anybody in the audience to make any comment or needs any clarification on that? Board? Anybody? I'll move. Item's been moved. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed the same? Item passes. Could we have a motion to adjourn, please? Move. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? We said adjourn. Um, <clears throat> we've done our, done our special presentations uh, prior to the start of our city council meeting. We will have a uh, invocation by our own city council member, uh, Hallie Grease, and uh, we would ask those who participate with us this evening that you would stand at this time. Please join me in a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we just want to come before you and thank you for the opportunity uh, to meet with you, our God, um, and petition you. We invoke that you would be with us here tonight. God, we want to pray for our leaders. God, we want to pray for our president, for our Congress, that you would give them wisdom um, and discernment in their decision making. God, for our governor, our legislature, city councils around the metro area. God, just that you would protect our leaders and that you would uh, give them wisdom in their decision making. We pray that you would be with us in our meeting tonight. God, give us um, discernment and humility as we make decisions that affect our city and our citizens. We just ask all these things in your name. Amen. All right, ask the uh, clerk to take roll, please. County? Here. Coleman? Moore? Here. Grease? Here. Mahaffey? Here. Hensley? Here. Meyer? Here. We have a quorum. All right, item two is uh, to, for the agenda as presented and or as amended, Anybody have anything on that? What item is, are we pulling 37? I, I uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, yep. I think I added late, but I would like to pull uh, 32 and 34. Okay. Um, that would probably be on the consent? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think those are, I've got those pulled. Okay. All right. Uh, Item 37 is not on the consent, but it is being pulled. I mean, it's being, it's not going to be discussed? Right. It's been withdrawn. Then withdrawn. Yeah, item 36. There are people in the audience, right? Mr. Mayor, my name is Paul Fibrickson, the president and general manager of KCCI TV. Right. Uh, I'd communicate was made with you. Uh, uh, this afternoon uh, via email by Ray Cole, and I tried to make a phone call to you, and uh, unfortunately I wasn't able to speak with you. But if I heard you correctly, item 37 is going Being on. withdrawn. Been withdrawn? <coughs> right. All right. Thank you, sir. You bet. Okay. Um, so could we have a motion to approve the agenda as presented and or as amended? It's been moved. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed the same. Item passes. Item three is approving the consent agenda, which tonight are items three through 34. Um, <clears throat> item five, Council Member Moore and I vote no. Item 32 and 34, Council Member Meyer wishes to speak. And item 33, Council Member Grease wishes to speak. Are there any other items that anybody would like to uh, either pull for clarification or discussion? <coughs> Any others? Council? Seeing none. Would move the consent. Chairman. Move the balance of the consent. Seven yes. All right. That takes us to item 32. Uh, 
Item 32 is an ordinance second consideration on the rezoning of property in the vicinity of Southeast 8th Street and Indianola Avenue, Southern Meadows Apartments from Limited R2 Multifamily Residential and R160 Low Density Single Family Residential to PUD Planned Unit Development. Councilmember Meyer. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, great project. In order to move it along more quickly, I'd like to uh, waive the third reading, so move uh, 32 with the additional um, with the addition of uh, waiving the third reading. So I'll move 32. You don't get any discussion? I'm in the audience. Seeing none. <clears throat> Seven yes. Item 33 is on the rezoning of 5300 Franklin Avenue, the Franklin Field Senior Apartments, LLLP. John Morrow's the agent from R-160, one family low density residential to PUD planned unit development. Uh, Council Member Grease. Uh, my intention was the same as Mr. Myers to waive the sec, or excuse me, waive the second and third reading on this one unless there's any opposition. Any discussion? Comment from Council? Seven yes. All right, item 34, which is to amend the TIF in the Southeast Agribusiness uh, Urban Renewal Area. Councilmember Meyer. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, unless somebody's here to speak, I'd uh, uh, like to do the same. Uh, move the second reading and waive the third. Seven yes. All right. <clears throat> that completes the consent agenda. Next item um, is item 35. Item 35 is from Council Members Coleman and Grease to speak regarding an honorary street name. Uh, who wants to go first? I, Chris? I might start and let Hallie make the motion. Um, we've been approached by the athletic direct de department, uh, Sandy Hatfield Club, uh, about a possible renaming of a short segment of Forest Avenue. I have provided them the city council policy on renaming streets, and what it essentially does is it pushes people towards an honorary designation. The name of the street doesn't change. There's not, you know, problems of, you know, public safety and post office issues. Um, but I have told them that I would uh, very much support referring their request to the planning and zoning, which is what our policy says we will do. Um, I've talked to the staff in the planning department, and Phil Delafield uh, tells me that they could take it up in early January and return with a... Uh, uh, recommendation for the council. The idea uh, is to name it after uh, an employee who has been with the university for 65 years um, in either um, a paid position or nearly a full-time volunteer position and uh, it would be a nice thing for them to do. It's their goal to honor him. I think he's in his mid-90s now. Uh, um, I was told that he was walking around the campus the other day, probably hard at work, uh, but they, they would like to do it during the basketball season of having a little unveiling. So, Allie. Yeah, and I would be glad to make that, that motion. Um, the gentleman is Paul Morrison. He's known as Mr. Drake. Um, and not every student who goes through Drake knows him personally, but everyone knows of Paul. Um, I mean, he's just a staple on campus. So I would gladly move that. Um, I don't know if the correct motion would be to refer it to planning and zoning for their review as soon as possible to bring back to council or to the city manager. Um, Mr. Grease, council members, is it your intent to uh, to approve this item? Yes. Uh, I, I, if, if you would simply make that motion and direct it back to me and the city attorney and, and we'll, whatever action is necessary, if you need further action here, we'll bring it back to you. If we need to send it to PNZ, I'm not sure, given your direction here, that it needs to go through a whole lot of steps. So we'll try to do it quickly. I think there's some, I get the sense of urgency from what you're saying. I would agree. I would like to see us just, if we could just vote on it tonight so that we can just move forward with it because there is a, a sense of urgency on this from what I understand. If that's possible, that would certainly be my motion. Okay.
Any further discussion? Been moved. Seven yes. All right, item 36, Council Member uh, Brian Meyer to speak regarding the following. Uh, Brian, let's just start with A, uh, speeding on East Army Post Road from Southeast 36th Street to the bypass. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, I think one of the reasons I brought this up is there's been a couple of accidents in that stretch. And one of the things that uh, the, the neighborhood and, and the businesses along there asked me to do was take a look at signage along there, along this stretch. People come off the bypass and they're going quite fast and uh, or coming from Des Moines onto the bypass. And uh, uh, right there is Avondale Hospital and I met with them last week and so the speeding part, I think PD has really been aggressive on uh, doing patrols out there. Uh, I almost encountered them myself one day. And uh, the, uh, <laughs> the uh, but one thing that was concerning to the folks there was signage. Uh, is there something we can do to sort of warn people that there's going to be turns into into the Avondale Pet Hospital? That'd be very helpful. Um, or something to sort of make sure people know there's a possible turn there. So uh, with that, I'll move 36A uh, with the uh, ask the city manager to come back with recommendations on signage and enforcement. Okay, the item's been moved. Is there any discussion by anyone in the audience on this item? Yes, sir. Come to the podium. We're still on the signs, right? No, this is no. Uh, okay. Well, this is uh, Spe speeding on Army Post Road. Okay. Next time, there's the signs. Stay right. <laughs> okay. Seeing no one. Items been moved. Seven yes. <clears throat> All right. Item two uh, is signs in the city right away. Councilmember Meyer. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, this was brought to me again by uh, Mr. Pins, who's here, and uh, Mr. Swift. Um, I know uh, this is a continuing battle. I know we've had some discussion with the city uh, attorney today on uh, actually enforcing the ordinance, which would be good. Uh, a couple years ago, we, um, we actually uh, did a case against the I Fix Faded Headlight guy. Um, he has really slowed down the sign spam, but uh, in order to stay on top of it, I think we need to sort of double back and, and do some more enforcement on these signs that are in the right of way. Um, and I know there's three people here tonight, so I'll turn it over to them to speak. The three M's, uh, Mel, Mike, and Mark. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor and members of the city council, I'm Mark White. I'm uh, active in my neighborhood association, but I'm not here tonight representing Indianola Hills. Uh, I have a copy of a letter here with me tonight that uh, Rick Clark wrote to Indianola Hills in 2005 regarding temporary signs and attempting to give us some guidance as far as what we might want to do or not want to do uh, if we decided to pick up some signs on the, <clears throat> on the right of way. I think it would be helpful if this letter or something similar to it were reissued uh, to all the neighborhood associations to uh, let them know what they might do and what they might not if they choose to pick up the sign. Mark, can we get a copy of that? or Is that your own Roger. copy? No, no. The original's in a safe place. <laughs> it's so safe that I couldn't find it today. Do you want this? I'll, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll move to receive and file the letter. and. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor County, members of the council. My name is Mel Pins. I live at 210 East Bundy Avenue, south side of Des Moines. I'm the president of the Somerset Neighborhood Association, and I'm also very uh, happy to serve as a volunteer and be the Ward 4 representative on the city's zoning board of adjustment. Um, as Brian referenced, um, I had talked to him about the issue of illegal temporary signage here in the city. Um, and I'm pleased to have a few moments tonight to speak to you about that issue. I've been involved with my neighborhood association for the last eight years. And in my capacity as an officer and in working with other neighborhood groups and residents um, throughout the city, one of the biggest issues that I see that neighborhood leaders have 
for any neighborhood that has one of our larger commercial corridors in it has been the aesthetics, appearance, and vitality of those corridors. And issue by issue, you've helped us with policies to work on those, whether it's a used car overlay district, whether it's working with the departments for street improvements or curb repair or zoning violations. But it seems like we've had one issue that's kind of been hard to tackle, and that's been the issue of these illegal signs. So I always say a picture's worth a thousand words, so what I want to do is just give you a brief presentation here. Um, just some fundamentals, which you may all know. Um, section 134 of the Municipal Code entitled Zoning deals with the regulation and the placement of, of all signs, whether it's a high V sign or an EMC insurance sign. And portable signs as a whole are prohibited. Now, there's some minor exceptions. Your campaign signs for council are okay, as long as they're on private property and you remove them after the election. Real estate signs, temporary signs are okay on the parcel that's for sale. Um, but I'm not here to give you the legal interpretation. But off-premise signs are generally prohibited as well as signs on public property, which is our street right-of-ways. The zoning enforcement officer enforces illegal signage on private property. Uh, if there's you know, the wrong kind of signs in front of high V on their property, zoning enforcement deals with that. Illegal signage on public right-of-ways along our streets, I don't know if it's through policy or what have you, but that's been assigned to the Traffic and Transportation Division and Engineering to deal with that. Um, we've had a few cases in the past, Brian referenced the iFix faded headlights guy. Um, that, that was dealt with and set a good precedent, but it seems like we still have some historic ongoing violations of this. And I'd like to see if we could get a handle on these, what I call sign spammers. Um, and again, picture's worth a thousand words. These photos were just taken last week. Army Post and Southwest 9th. You've seen these elsewhere. Here's County Line Road and US 69. Lose weight at Nutra Shop on South 50th Street in West Des Moines. Look through the intersection right in front of the yellow light. You'll see their other sign on the other side so you don't miss it. Here's a bunch of we buy houses, rent to own. I know there's always going to be somebody putting up a little sign for something. I get that. But the rent to own, whoever these people are, they're pretty dramatic. They don't pay to get the sign printed. They have good penmanship. But they're all over the city with these things. Uh, here's how you can get high-speed internet. Too bad half the number's missing. Apparently the sign's been there a long time. This is at the Quick Trip at Southwest 9th and Army Post. And my favorite. If you haven't seen this, you're not paying attention to the road in front of you. This is at McKinley and Southwest 9th. The guy that puts these up does this all over the metro, all over central Iowa. So what's the big deal about this? Who cares? Well, the quality of life in our communities is really exhibited by what our city looks like, especially our major corridors, because our streets are a welcome mat to anybody that visits our city. We all know that with Fleur and the Gateway West, that's fine. But people come to the city from different areas. And when they come here to set up a business or buy a house, how our city looks uh, really affects their interest in, in investing with us. I think this visual pollution of these signs detracts from our community character. and. It's kind of the first crack in the broken window theory in urban planning, which I don't want to get into detail, but if your property is falling apart, then you don't take care of it, the neighbor doesn't take care of it, pretty soon the whole neighborhood, and sometimes entire communities uh, go downhill. As Nadine Hogate said, she got involved because things weren't looking too good in her area and she cared about the value of her house. I'm the same way. Um, that's a major concern, but you know what? This form of advertising also competes directly with our local businesses here that do the right thing, advertise how they're supposed to comply with the sign ordinances, and they help our local media and our local economy. So what have you done to work on this? I think zoning enforcement has worked well on private property. I give them a lot of credit. I do know if I call to ask or complain about something, it gets followed up. I don't know that enforcement of sign ordinances along our streets has been working as well. Traffic and transportation does a great job working on our city streets and designing intersections and all that stuff, but they're not designed to be a code enforcement department. And I think this gets them into some areas where they maybe don't have the expertise and the skill to deal with, with some of these scoff laws. Uh, we had a case, it was actually 09, I have 08 up here, uh, I fix faded headlights guy all over Skip's, Skip's side of town, Brian's side of town. Um, we took him to uh, a small claims court. The city said, if we take him to court, you'll have to testify. Do you want to do that? I said, you bet. If you're going, I'll be there shoulder to shoulder. Got a fine against the guy. He went away immediately. But since that time, I don't think we've had effective enforcement. And I hope you can work on that. Um, by improving some of that, I'll buzz along here. Um, I'd like to end with a sense of humor. I did not put this sign up. 
Um, people in Richmond, Virginia put this sign up because their city had failed to actively take a role in enforcing this ordinance, so they decided to have fun with it. So if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Otherwise, I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. You bet. Hi, good afternoon. Mike Swift, uh, Swift Auto Salvage in Des Moines, Trails and Auto Salvage in Des Moines. Um, you probably all got emails from me, uh, very vigilant on the sign issue. Um, don't have a problem with legal signs, but I have a problem with the illegal signs. I've probably collected over the last four years probably a thousand signs myself. Um, it's now become a game for my nieces, nephews, family, friends. Uh, I have a niece that's a school teacher that stopped her school bus one day just to get out and get a sign for Uncle Mike. So I just find the sign issue. Um, I know Brian, a uh, newspaper article about Brian a couple years ago, it was uh, refreshing to see somebody else bothered about these signs. Um, we all know who it is. Um, I've sent some information to the city on who it is and, and, and even hired my own private investigator to uh, find out who these people are putting these signs out. Uh, as a business owner, I have to go by certain signs. Uh, I have to come by certain variances myself. Uh, I have a sign at the end of our street that I can't paint a different color. I can't change it because of you know, a non-conforming sign that can't be changed. I would just like to see uh, enforcement beefed up on these signs. Um, I'm just uh, like this morning, at, uh, I live in Urbandale, and I picked up a sign this morning. I have four in the back of my truck now, so I'm, I'm, I want to take up a different hobby besides collecting signs. <laughs> so uh, I don't have a presentation like Mel did, but uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else in the audience want to make comment on this? How about counsel? Right. Uh, I'd like to hear from Mr. Lester on uh, enforcement efforts in the past and enforcement efforts currently and moving forward. Uh, thank you, Councilmember Meyer, uh, Mayor, City Council. Um, I'm pleased to report that um, we have been moving forward, albeit uh, probably more slowly than all of us would like, with uh, enforcement on, on this issue. Uh, there were two cases that were filed today. Um, we had a little snafu with uh, the check, or they would have been filed uh, actually last week before uh, this matter was brought up. But we don't mind uh, the encouragement uh, from uh, Mr. Pence, and uh, in fact, appreciate it. Uh, we have two cases um, already going uh, to court, as I said. Uh, those um, were filed, um, should be served shortly, hopefully. Uh, we have uh, a couple of additional cases we're going to go down. Um, the uh, signers get uh, more and more clever as we go along. We've run into an, a number of them where they're apparently using track, <clears throat> excuse me, track phones now, so that there's no uh, name uh, associated with the uh, phone. It makes it a lot more difficult. We can't just prosecute a phone number. Uh, we don't have, as uh, Mr. Pins accurately points out, we don't have staff um, who can conduct some kind of sting uh, uh, operation. We uh, track down who legally owns the, the phone and the number and is placing the signs, and that's how we, we prosecute them. That's what we're uh, doing so far. We are going to um, try to make use of subpoena power here in the next uh, week or so with a couple of additional um, uh, cases where we found phone numbers that are assigned to a particular phone company, but our uh, service that we use, which is uh, Accurate um, uh, and Lexus, um, are not able to, to get us a name, so we're going to go to Verizon and, and try to compel them to give us the name. Uh, it's my understanding that to date they've not agreed to give that to us uh, voluntarily, but will with subpoena. So we'll uh, make an effort uh, to move that uh, forward as well. Um, we're mindful of, of the signs and the issues that they create, and uh, we'll continue to do that, and we'll work with the, the manager and with um, engineering to, to move all of these prosecutions ahead. I, I would ask um, part of the motion that will be to re the motion be refer to, uh, to the city manager and the city attorney. Uh, but I would be mindful of, I think both Mike and Mal mentioned that they have possible evidence that could be used moving forward. So I'd like you to guys to maybe get their contact information and work with them on the evidence that they're able to possibly present in small claims. And Certainly, we will do that. That'll be. Uh, Motion moving forward. I want to thank uh, everybody for coming down and talk, speaking about this this evening. I know that uh, not all, years ago, uh, Bob and the rest of us that were on planning and zoning, we worked on signs of all kinds, but this certainly is the, um, as you pointed out, Mel, the most 
visual of pollution uh, that seems to just crop up and grow uh, in odd places at uh, uh, times day or night, 365 days a year. So I appreciate everybody's uh, work on this, and uh, um, I will certainly fully support your, your work on this. Brian. Uh, thanks, Mayor. I'll move 36B uh, and ask that uh, what was previously asked. Seven yes. All right. That takes us now to item 38, which is a receipt of the Des Moines Water Works adopted budget for the calendar year ending December 31st, 2012. Is there anyone here to speak on that item? Mr. Mayor, um, there's nobody to speak on it. We received the um, the summaries, the very brief summaries, and I guess what, if you look at some of the swings between the actual and what was the re-estimated, I'd like to ask that we get back to them and ask the staff to give us what were the um, assumptions used in putting the budget together. I know that it was a, it was approved by um, their board, but based upon the rate increases and the really the little amount of public debate that there has been, I'd just like to have that information, particularly as we're dealing with budget issues. Yeah. I'll move. I'll also say, and, and uh, while we forward that and ask the uh, staff and the board over there to um, uh, react to that request, um, I do want to thank them for working with us uh, in their departments on uh, a number of collaborative uh, efforts, and uh, let's continue to um, uh, direct our staff and theirs to work diligently together and uh, to address some of those those items. So, Great. appreciate it. Any comment, anybody in the audience? Well, Maybe. my concern is if anybody within our departments look this over very closely, Rick, do we, uh, we try to analyze it? See. Well, uh, Mr. Mahaffey, council members, we, we do. Uh, Alan McKinley from my office uh, attends uh, uh, some of the finance committees of the Waterworks Department, and I'm sure has uh, some insight which he would be happy to share with all of you. But we'll do the analysis that you suggested and get back to you with uh, our thoughts and whatever we discover in that process. So I understand the reason for your question, and we, we too are concerned about it, and we'll make sure we get the information you've asked for. Thank you. Item's been moved. Seven yes. All right, let's move quickly to item uh, 46, which is a receipt of report from the city manager regarding the Shop and Save, 1829 6th Avenue, as a consideration of Class E liquor license renewal uh, with a C beer and a B wine for the Shop and Save at 1829 6th Avenue. Mr. Manager. Actually, uh, Mayor and Council, I'm going to have City Attorney Jeff Lester take this. He's really done the lion's share of the work in negotiating the agreement with the property owner. I think, Jeff, perhaps you could overview it best. Sure. Uh, thank you, Rick. Um, Mayor, Council Members, uh, we had a, a meeting uh, last week with the, uh, the owner, uh, his council, uh, and a number of representatives from the neighborhood uh, on this issue. Um, the meeting was very cordial. Uh, it was a um, uh, helpful exchange and communication of ideas and issues, uh, some of which um, uh, it, it was apparent the, the owner was not familiar with. Uh, there were a number of suggestions that were exchanged uh, that ultimately culminated in the agreement uh, that you see before you. And uh, I apologize because I was uh, discussing some issues with the mayor earlier. Uh, so I do have um, copies of the agreement that are actually executed. Uh, now um, for your review. Uh, the long and the short of it, and, and I do want to uh, emphasize to Council that the neighborhood uh, group did participate uh, in this. They actively participated in the discussion. They actively participated uh, in the suggestions uh, for the agreement, uh, and they actually uh, actively participated in the review uh, and editing and revisions to the agreement. And I believe that they are uh, all in accord uh, with um, with what's gone on, uh, just to uh, very quickly uh, give you an overview, uh, a number of the items have already been uh, completed, including a signed trespass letter for the Des Moines Police Department to use to help keep um, undesirable uh, elements who are causing a lot of the issues um, off of the property. Uh, they're going to place no loitering signs. 
uh, and uh, post uh, the Iowa Code No Trespassing uh, as well. They've installed an additional outdoor camera. Uh, they're going to staff an additional employee, and if that isn't satisfactory, then they're looking to hire uh, security personnel or off-duty police officers for the hours of 7 to 9 p.m. Thursdays through Saturday. Uh, and again, they're going to work with the Neighborhood Association on, on that to resolve any issues. Uh, they've installed an additional trash bin in the parking lot. Um, they're going to instruct their employees to police the lot uh, for both trash and for um, uh, people that shouldn't be there. Um, there is an agreement to remove the payphones if that's determined to be necessary. Uh, the owner or a designee is going to attend the, the Riverbend Neighborhood Association uh, monthly meetings, and delivery trucks will be um, rerouted within uh, the area when they're delivering so as not to obstruct traffic. Employees will call the police, um, and, and that includes for violations of the city noise uh, ordinances, and they will post a, a noise ordinance sign. Uh, we're hopeful um, that um, this will alleviate many of the problems that the neighborhood uh, had and that the business has experienced. Uh, I believe the, uh, uh, everyone that was in attendance at the meeting uh, was um, satisfied with the level of cooperation. Uh, but again, we, we will monitor to make sure that we are um, obtaining com compliance with this and, and work with the Neighborhood Association to, uh, to ensure compliance. Jeff, on the one thing I noticed, I drove by there again yesterday just looking at it to see what was going on, and they still have the liquor sign up there. I mean, it still comes across it is a liquor store. It says shop and save, and then over in letters that are even bigger than the shop and save letters, it says liquor. <laughs> is that legal? Uh, that they're advertising one of their products. It's uh, probably uh, I'm sure they would point to for example Walgreens that uh, Or grocery stores that will have pharmacy liquor um, uh, On the outside of their building um, that actually was not one of the items that um, That we discussed we can certainly broach that uh, subject with with the owner uh, and their counsel They've been very very amenable and very agreeable to uh, things we've suggested so far so we can certainly um, suggest that to them as well okay. I guess I would explore it at a minimum. I don't, if it's not legal, I mean, you know, if they're com in compliance, there's something you can do. But, I mean, when you drive by, it looks like it's a liquor store. Well, and, and you know, they're, uh, one of the things that uh, we, we discussed with the owner, the owner is here, I see, out in the audience. Um, one of the things that we discussed is that they're very close <laughs> to their, their level currently at 50% mark, and that will move to 60% in, in 2013, I believe. Uh, so they're going to have to make some adjustments to their uh, business model uh, to continue being licensed, and that may be one of the things that he wants to look at in, in terms of adver advertisement, and we'll certainly point that out. Okay. Any other comments? Seeing none, anybody in the audience? We uh, have a motion can I, to... Can I... I know there's some people from the neighborhood, or is everybody comfortable with this? Anybody want to speak on behalf of you? Uh, I'll speak. Right here. I don't have much of a voice. That's all right. Mike Hildebrand, 410 Franklin Avenue, um, 200 feet away from the store. Uh, I'm also the Riverbend Neighborhood Board President. Um, I agree with the city attorney. The meeting was very cordial. Um, we, the owners and the manager were there. Um, very receptive to all the suggestions. They had actually executed some of the suggestions in advance. So I was very comfortable with what they proposed. Um, and what we proposed, what the city proposed, what the business had already um, executed and were, were willing to do. So we are very satisfied. We are going to work directly with them on any concerns. If we need to, we will escalate with the city. And then in 2013, we'll revisit the 60-40. Uh, the mm -hmm. And I do also want to thank the mayor, city council, and the city for working and taking this on and immediately taking care of the issue. I, I appreciate everything that was done. And I appreciate the um, business owners stepping off and taking responsibility. Thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> mayor, council. I'm Roger Thompson, Vice President of the Riverbend Association. Not only did I like this agreement, we would also like to offer that up to the other neighborhoods as a template for problems 
in other areas. I think it would be good to really look at that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Roger. And just based on my conversations with the neighborhood, I'll move item 46A. Um, our attorney mentioned that the neighborhood was actively involved in, in the discussions, and I have no doubt with, with these folks that they'll continue to be very active um, in, in making sure they stay on top of it. And Mike, to your um, comments about the council, we're still supportive of, of what you're doing. Um, and we just want to thank you um, as a neighborhood for being active in your neighborhood and, and helping bring this to our attention. So thank you. Seven yes. All right, let's uh, open the hearings at uh, 5.06. First hearing item is item 39. It's on appeal from James Pratt of 10 Maple, number 240 of Nevada, Iowa, of the administrative uh, hearing officer's decision regarding his dog. Mr. Pratt in the audience. Mr. Pratt. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, I'm the owner of Chloe, the black and white female pit bull. Um, she was deemed to be, uh, to be put down. Um, we had a hearing a while ago, and um, the basis of the hearing, the, the decision made was that uh, the situation was <clears throat> a, uh, two police officers had came to my residence. I was not home, and they went into my residence without a warrant, and uh, my dog had bit one of the police officers. And the decision that the hearing officer made, she had said that um, inside the residence, the dog was held by Miss Martinez, and when they came in, she was so aggressive that she pulled away from Miss Martinez and bit the police officer. And at the time of the hearing, Miss Martinez was not available to be here. Today, she is here, and she can speak on the matter herself as to her own account of it. Um, but at the time, Miss Martinez was outside the door with the police officers. When the police officers came in the door, they went in first, Miss Martinez came in behind them. The dog had already bit the police officer before she had ever entered the room. And that's the decision based on the, what the uh, hearing officer had found, the why uh, they were gonna euthanize my dog. Is that, um, Cause it says here in, um, in the, the dangerous animal on your guys' definitions, cannot be controlled or restrained by the owner at the time of the attack or to prevent the occurrence. And at the time, she wasn't held by Miss Martinez. Miss Martinez wasn't even in the residence. She was with the, with the police officers outside. And um, with that, um, I, that's why I appealed the, the decision is because there was nobody there to hold, restrain my dog. She was home. I was not there. And the officers went into my residence without a warrant. And my dog was there. Um, She's a dog, and she was protecting her home. She didn't know who was coming in. They were coming in aggressively, and she reacted to it. Nobody was there to restrain her. Uh, Miss Martinez is sitting right over there, who was with the cops, who had the cops brought to the house, as a matter of fact. And on that, I'll let you speak to her if you wish. Well, I think that, uh, unfortunately, we need to hear, um, you know, your comments on it, but I don't think we can present any new uh, evidence, uh, uh, given the circumstances, uh, having already had a hearing. But I think that we ought to have the uh, hearing, uh, Sergeant Radabaugh, come up. Uh, and quickly go over some of the details. Um, but we certainly appreciate your uh, comments. Does any of the council have any questions that they would uh, uh, like to I have a question. address, Mr. Pratt? Yes. Mr. Pratt, um, you were talking about the one instance where the police officer was bit, but what about the other issues where the, the other, other dog was killed? The, the other incident, um, when I moved to Des Moines, I came from Story County, which you didn't have to have license, didn't have to have tags. I came down here, I got her license tagged, and I had to have her on a leash of six feet or less, accompanied by an adult. She was under all of them rules and regulations. And at the time, my mother had taken her outside to go to the bathroom on her leash with her tags. And another dog came up aggressively and bit my mom. And my dog reacted to that and attacked the other dog. The Yorkie came up and bit your mother? My mom had to go to the hospital over that. She had severe bites, and even in the report it says, the doctor said bites from a small, type dog. 
on my mom's hand. Okay. Any other questions? She, she bit your mother on the on her hand, the and other, she reached down to the other dog did. Yeah. Yeah, the but, other dog attacked my mom, bit her hand. But did she? Did your mother reach down to pet the dog or something? I, or I, I, I was not there. All I know is what I read in the report is that my mom suffered bite wounds from the, the other dog was off the leash, came up to my dog, and the other owner of the dog came up, kicked the dog. And I don't know if I wasn't there, so I can't speak personally. So I don't know if the other dog reacted react to that, and then my dog reacted. But in any way, my mom was bit by the other dog, and sadly, but it's true, the other dog ended up dying over the incident. Although it says in the information we have that the injuries were consistent with the bite of a large breed dog. No, uh, the mom, mom was bit by a small breed dog. It's in there. I, I'm just telling you it's what it says here. There's another form in there where it's, it's in there, the doctor. Mr. Rodball probably could clarify that. Sergeant Ronnie with the police department. <clears throat> Excuse me. On uh, September 26, uh, the police officers were at Mr. Pratt's residence on a, uh, some sort of a dispute or disturbance. Uh, uh, they were in his apartment. Miss Martinez had, a, had control of the dog. She was instructed to keep the dog away from the police officers. The dog pulled away from her and bit a police officer in the leg. Uh, after that incident, uh, Mr. Pratt's dog was, was put under quarantine, uh, standard practice. Uh, the dog was, uh, because of its breed, Mr. Pratt was served a vicious dog letter. Um, he had the opportunity to appeal. If he didn't feel the dog met the criteria, he didn't appeal. Um, a lot of the information that he's, he's uh, presenting now never came to light at that point. Um, on uh, October 25th, uh, Mr. Pratt's dog was being walked on a leash by his mother. Uh, another dog owned by somebody else came up to the uh, Mr. Pratt's dog. Uh, and sniffed Mr. Pratt's dog. Then uh, Mr. Pratt's dog uh, proceeded to bite and, and uh, kill the other dog. Uh, during the bite incident, uh, uh, a neighbor, uh, unconnected with everybody involved, heard the, the disturbance or heard the, I'm sure, a lot of people yelling and screaming, I'm, I'm assuming. He came over to offer assistance, tried to pry open Mr. Pratt's dog's mouth to get the victim dog out. Uh, he sustained a, a torn skin on his finger. Um, also during the, the bite incident with Mr. Pratt's dog, the victim dog owner tried to get rescue her dog and was bit by Mr. Pratt's dog, the large breed dog. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Pratt's mother was bit by the victim dog during the ordeal. Um, I. Uh, thought long and hard about this whole thing and, and my concern is, is do I wait for a third incident to occur? Um, I don't take dangerous animal declarations very lightly, um, but I, this dog has shown a propensity to bite and, and thus uh, uh, for the safety of anybody else and anybody else's dog, I thought it was appropriate to file a dangerous animal letter on Mr. Pratt. Yes, uh, yeah, city attorney has a question for you. Uh, Officer Ranova, where in the uh, record uh, does Mr. Pratt claim that um, uh, the woman in control of the animal, where in the record did he claim that previously to, to today? That, that the, the, uh, Ms. Martinez, I believe, had control, that she did not have control of the animal and that she was out with the officers. Did he claim that anywhere in the record prior uh, to today? The part earlier where he was talking about his mother was bit by the victim dog. Is that, that, what you mean? that part I understand, but I'm saying, is there any place <laughs> in this record where he claimed um, at the hearing that Ms. Martinez was not uh, in control of the dog or was not in the uh, presence of the dog when the bite happened? I, I don't recall that at all, no. And the council is limited, uh, you're familiar with the rules? Yes, sir. And the council is limited to, to the evidence that's in this record, correct? Correct. That's all the questions I have, Mayor. Any, Helen. The only comment I would make, if you read through the the documents on, I think it's page 25 of 68 of the record, something like that, it's actually, there's a supplemental incident report, and it says that it was actually on the knee, not on the hand, and that it was consistent with a large dog. So that's in the record. That was uh, the victim dog owner got bit in the knee, 
Mr. Pratt's mother got bit on the hand. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor, may I ask you a question, please? Forward. Go ahead. Um, regarding your question, um, I knew nothing of Ms. Martinez even being in the room until the decision came out from the hearing officer. Because my personal knowledge of being there at the time, I knew she wasn't there. So it was never an issue at the time of the hearing because there was nobody there to control her inside the house. I didn't believe at the time that this, that, that was what was supposed to be going on. It was that Ms. Martinez was in there controlling my dog. Uh, you, Your Honor, if I may. Yes, please. You, you testified in this matter earlier under oath, correct? Yes, sir. And uh, you were asked um, by the, the uh, hearing officer, um, were you there uh, at that time also? And she's referencing when you said they went in unlawfully without a warrant. She said, were you there at that time also? And you answered, I came walking up the stairs just as this went on. I came walking up the stairs as <clears throat> one officer came walking out of my room. Is that what you answered, sir, that, that I came walking up the stairs just as this went on? Uh, it was after the... After the incident already happened, I asked the officer what had happened. Okay, I'm, I'm asking you what, you what you testified to at the hearing, sir. Like if that's what's written down, then... You, so if that's what's in the, in the hearing right, transcript, right. you wouldn't have any reason to disagree with that, right. would you, sir? Right. Uh, and the next question, she said, so you saw all that transpired, and your answer was right. Is that correct, sir? I saw what transpired as I got there. What happened before that, I can't speak for but, uh, and at no time did you say anything, uh, uh, I mean, the, the testimony about Ms. Martinez, that was in, in uh, provided at the, the hearing, was it not? Um, under my knowledge, it was that the police officers and Ms. Martinez was at the door with the manager, wanting the door open. Okay. And you, you had an opportunity, in fact, you were asked uh, under oath whether or not you uh, had uh, the city's exhibits, and you answered that you did have them, correct? I was showing them just before the hearing, yes. That's all I have here. Okay. All right. Thank you. It, it, it's limited to argument. Um, there's no additional evidence that can be taken. It's limited to argument by the, from the uh, parties without additional evidence. So. If, if you have, if you can't provide additional evidence, man. you can't come forward and testify about additional facts that were not presented to the hearing officer. Council is acting as an appellate body. They're simply reviewing the record. And that's by, by law, that's what they're... Do you have my doctor's statement saying that I was paid by it? They have the, the entire record. If you want to explain a particular part of the record, uh, that would uh, really be up to Mr. Pratt uh, to do so. I would rather uh, Ms. Martinez um, because she wasn't able to come to the hearing. Well, she can't act as, a, as your representative, sir. She's not. She's, she's that, I understand, but then she's providing evidence. That's my point. You're, you're able to argue whatever you want to argue in the record. So if you want to talk about that particular paper again, you've already brought it to council's attention. If you want to talk about that again, you want to know what to do. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I, I think... I'll make the motion. I think um, these cases are tough because there's not a, a good answer and there's a bad result. I guess I would tend to agree with Officer Radabaugh that there is a propensity for violence here. I mean, it, it killed another animal um, while it was on a leash being walked. Um, and so just based on the record, I, I can't it would be very difficult if, if this happened to a child or, or someone else down the road to say that we had the opportunity to prevent that and we didn't do anything. So with that, I will move to uphold the hearing officer's decision on item number 46, 39. Six yes. All right. Um, so 
Sergeant, do you want to uh, speak to him about uh, the outcome and uh, what happens now? I'll meet with you out, out, uh, outside of the hearing room. Item 40, an assessment of a $500 penalty for violation of the Iowa alcoholic beverage laws sale to the minor to the following. A is the Star Bar at 2811 Ingersoll. B is the Downtown Pantry at 208 4th Street. C is Nadry Inc., 2701 Ingersoll Avenue. D is Johnny's Hall of Fame at 302 Court. And E is U.S. Gas at 3000 Southwest 9th Street. Is there anyone here to speak on any of the items 40A through E? I'll move 48-3-B. Item's been moved. Six yes. Mm -hmm. Item 41 is a request uh, from Capstone Ventures LLC to rezone 315 Southwest 14th Street from C3B Central Business District Mixed Use to PUD Planned Unit Development mm -hmm. and uh, to continue that hearing to December 19th of 2011 at 5 p.m. Uh, again, the vote this evening is on a request to continue to December 19th. I'll move item 41. We'd like to make it clear on that. All right. Uh, the hearing uh, will be continued to that date. If you would like to make a statement tonight, we would uh, suspect or hope that you would not uh, make statements of like manner at that time uh, when this hearing comes up. So with that understood, you're welcome can, can to... Can I just add, though, I, I guess I bothered. We're continuing the hearing. We had this discussion previously at the last council meeting. And because it had been posted, I can't remember exactly what the details were, but we made it very clear that the intent was to continue this to the 19th. And I don't. I know the attorneys here. You weren't at the last meeting. They, we, they were we, made it, we made it very clear, though, that we were going to continue the meeting. Well, I understand, but but um, it was posted, um, and if they were not here, uh, it, it was posted for hearing, and that was a dilemma we had the other night. Tonight is the hearing, not not last time, and so I think that we uh, have a bit of a dilemma, Mr. I mean, we have Attorney. An issue with the continuance, I, I understand. The what. Technically, what happens on, on each of these items when they're continued like this, the hearing actually opens to comply with, with the notice that the hearing was going to be on this date. The hearing opens, um, and then council decides uh, to, to move it forward. Um, our, our advice, and I, I talked in anticipation of this this afternoon, I talked again uh, both with uh, my predecessor as well as um, with uh, uh, Larry um, McDowell for my staff, and, and we're very comfortable that, um, that probably, obviously, the best practice would be to have the hearing. But if you're going to continue it, um, to let because it, it's open, uh, it would be best to allow anyone who wants to speak um, to, to speak. Um, that being said, uh, as the mayor suggested, there's going to be an additional opportunity on the 19th, um, and um, the council's rules preclude um, repetitive. Uh, testimony, so um, this would kind of be one bite at the apple, I guess. I guess I just want to be on the record, though, that um, if we allow them to speak, it was clear from the individuals bringing it forward that they were not coming prepared to speak tonight. If if I heard them correctly, though, what they just stated is that they don't they're not speaking on the merits tonight, but rather on the continuance. They want to speak to the continuance. I mean, is that, that and that that's. One of the reasons that really probably um, um, lends itself to council hearing whatever it is, because council is going to be deciding to go at, go ahead and continue. So, okay. With that, uh, who would like to speak? They weren't at the last meeting. Hi, Lawyer. Okay, give us your name and address, please. I'm Megan Felt, and I'm a member of Iowa Citizens for Community Improvement, and my address is 13. 17 8th Street. <clears throat> and I'm here with a large group of people tonight, and I just want to allow people to stand up so you can see how many people 
are here wishing that you would vote on this matter tonight and not have a continuance. Great. Be good. Thank you. <clears throat> As you know, this detention center was proposed uh, in May, and since then it's been presented at Zoning Board of Adjustment, the Plan and Zoning Commission, and City Council, and CCI members have been at every meeting along the way. <clears throat> The Planning and Zoning Commission recommended the denial of the proposal, but we have not yet heard a hearing. The people who are opposed to this detention center deserve a space to have their voices heard, <clears throat> and we're really disappointed that we can't have that space tonight. If the proposal is continued today, it will be the third continuance, and once again, our members will leave without seeing action. We have a letter to present to you. We've presented this twice before. Um, it is community members and organizations that are opposed to the ICE deten Detention Center. But tonight, this letter has 515 signatures and nine supporting organizations. Who should I give that to? Uh, Ms. Coleman, and then he'll move to receive and file. I'll move to receive and file. Then moved. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. So as this letter demonstrates, opposition to this ICE detention center is growing. We as CCI members and community members stand against the detention center in any expansion of ICE enforcement activities in the Des Moines community and in the state of Iowa. Increased enforcement offers no real solution to broken families and damaged communities that deportations cause. What we want is human immigration reform can you, can and a I just, pathway can I to just citizenship. Ask a question here. We're getting into the merits right. of the arguments regarding the detention basin. Are you <laughs> is your plan tonight to present this, or do you want to present this at the later date? Is that fair, Mr. Attorney? I, I think that's a reasonable. Are point. we getting into the merits of the detention? Yes. Well, I, yeah, that, that that's a, a reasonable question. So, I, uh, if uh, under council's rules, council can decide. At a later point in time, not to hear the same argument. I will. I want people to be able to be heard at a later date. I'm just asking that you please make that happen on the 19th and not continue it again. We're really disappointed to bring all these people out. People are here from Ames and other cities to talk, and they're not given that opportunity. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Megan. That, I think that's a very reasonable request. I understand that we had that debate when we had the discussion about setting the date or moving it to the 19th. We did have that very same discussion, so I understand and I'm very supportive of that. Um, looking at your letter with all of your signatures, I think it's really important when you give us petitions like this that we have contact information for the individuals, and these are just individuals that have been listed here, and that is not typically how we would receive petitions. Okay. All right, well, we'll try to present that at the next Great. hearing. And thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I will move item 41 to continue the hearing to the 19th. And we want to thank all of you for coming down this evening and do apologize to you for the uh, continuance. Uh, it is a matter that uh, is um, caused some uneasiness uh, on the part of the city council as well. So thanks for coming down. Mr. Mayor, if I Please. could make one quick comment. Yep. Perhaps there's a way the city could notify someone from CCI. It was published in the agenda as being continued. And so if there's a way maybe we can notify them and save them the trouble of coming on the 19th if it ends up being continue to, I, I don't know what the council's plan is on the 19th, but if there's a way we may, perhaps we can notify them at least so they don't come to the meeting prepared to speak. We don't mind coming down. Very good. Right, I, I think the, uh, um, they, they were aware of that uh, this evening. I think that um, um, the concern is the continued continuance. Uh, you know, let's hear it, let's uh, put the merits on the table and let's, let's vote on it. So I appreciate it. Um, we've got a vote and move. Seven yes. Thank you all for coming down.
Next item is item 42 in the vacation conveyance of a small segment of a remaining public alley uh, right of way located in the block bounded by Vine, Southwest Water, Mar Water Market, and Southwest Second Streets to the Waterfront Lodging Inc. And to continue that to, to January 23rd, 2012 at 5 p.m. Is there anyone here to speak on that item? Seeing none, could we have a motion on I'll that? I'll move item continuous. 42 to continue to January 23rd. Seven yes. Item 43, on the voluntary annexation of approximately uh, 0.768 acres in Delaware Township, Polk County, in the vicinity of 5055 Northeast 38th Avenue, uh, Council Communication Number 11-741. Is there anyone here to speak on this item? Seeing none, this has been a long time coming, and with the cooperation of John Rowan of Polk County and a lot of work done by legal staff, Roger Brown especially on this, I, uh, uh, if you're ready for a motion, I'll move this. Anyone in the audience to speak? Seeing none, it's been moved. Seven yes. Item 44, on the 2011-1 omnibus amendment to the city's urban revitalization plans, council communication number 11-747A is a recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Commission. Is there anyone in the audience to speak on this? Mr. Mayor. We've had a number of uh, meetings um, at workshops, city council on this. Uh, Mr. Manager, do you have a comment? Mr. Mayor, council members, I did not much of one other than to say this is an important action. We've had a couple of three workshops, as the mayor mentioned. Uh, this does extend the tax abatement and make some other important changes. Uh, I won't take the time to review it. I think we've done that before, but we'd be happy to talk about it in more detail if you'd like. I just simply wanted to say it's an important action uh, that's before you this evening with regard to the city's tax abatement program. I'll move item 44, and I agree with the city manager. This is extremely important uh, for the overall um, focus on economic development within the city. And I think the uh, what I'm uh, most excited about is the uh, across-the-board uniform commercial tax abatement that will be there, eliminate some of the confusion. Okay, items have been moved. Anyone uh, have comment? Seven yes. All right, item 45 is on an asbestos removal at the Southern Meadows, phase two, 2800 <coughs> Southeast 8th Street. Uh, resolution approving the plan specifications, form of contract documents, engineer's estimate, and designating the lowest responsible bidder as ESA Inc. D. Mike Mitchell, president. $46,800, Council Communication Number 11-728A is approving the contract and the bond. Is there anyone in the audience to speak on this item? Seeing none. I'll move 45 and 45A. 45-45A has been moved. Seven yes. Uh, we have one extra item this evening. Uh, it was presented and filed after 5 p.m. on Wednesday uh, and is a request from Council Member Hensley to discuss facades and signage around the Sculpture Park. Mrs. Hensley. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, as we all know, there's been a lot of discussion with the subway coming into um, the Gateway Park. I did have the opportunity this, after, or this morning to meet with the owners of the subway as well as the, um, I should say, the tenants and then uh, the property owner. Had a very good conversation. It's a um, really an upscale store, very nice. It's larger than is typically required of a Subway to encourage dining in the store, which is unique uh, to Subway stores. Um, and as a result of that discussion, it was interesting because, believe it or not, they have half 
of the amount of signage that would be uh, they would be eligible for under the current city ordinance. So what that says is, you know, we really if if that's problematic for us, we need to be um, looking at signage in the Gateway Park. Um, this is not an issue for this particular building, but again, he's got half of what would be available. And I think we probably all remember that building before the subway went in and the signage on the side. It's a lot better now. It's a heck of a lot better. Um, and I think that, though, it does underscore the need for us if we want to have uh, additional oversight or review of signage and what is available and what's not allowed in the Gateway Park. It was interesting because I've got pictures here at night to show all of the other neon signs and what is down there in the Gateway Park. And we also have some other development that's going on that could potentially be even more of an issue um, for us as that comes online. So what I'd like to do is to refer it to the city manager in P and Z and ask for review and recommendations. Maybe there will be some, maybe there won't be, but just so that we have a plan in place and everybody understands what's acceptable <coughs> and how we'll go forward. I, I, I agree and um, um, I'm, I'm happy uh, to have that. I've driven by it several times and it is a totally different look there, but uh, let's face it, we have more people in the city that can afford to eat at Subway than a lot of the other restaurants downtown and it's a nice amenity to have if, if done right. I, I wonder if the intention is to change the sign ordinance down there if it's not in our interest to to establish a moratorium for two weeks until we get something back just so nobody tries to beat us to the punch or looking for leverage or I, I don't know if that is a worry of ours from the permit development standpoint or <clears throat> I guess I, I understand and appreciate what you're saying um, in talking with the property owner at Subway, even though he's got the ability to do additional signage, he made it very clear that he's got the signage. I'm not talking about him. I'm, yeah, you know, I, I'm, I, uh, I'm, I just hate to do another two-week moratorium just because I think that... I, I wonder if I could, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, I, I, Manager. If, if, first of all, I, th I think the idea of looking at signage regulations uh, around the gateway, and as the mayor just sort of whispered to me, we may want to look at other areas downtown as well where you have these kinds of issues. Uh, I hesitate to mention the Hampton Hotel, but a lot of the discussion around that is on signage, and it may be an opportunity for you to look at that particular issue there and in other areas that are particularly sensitive. So uh, should the council approve the motion, uh, I'll work with the B&Z folks to look at this uh, for the gateway, but for other areas that might be similar in their uh, I think, approach to it. I think it. a couple years ago we looked at the East Village and we did something with the East Village regarding that. That might be a, a place to start. Signage, so you may want to use that as a template. That might be well, a and I'd to also start. add the uh, facades on the front on the front of buildings too would be another issue because you've got some different things going on there. We'll, there we'll, well. we'll do that with respect to the moratorium idea. We'll, we'll take a look at that. I'm not sure what's pending right now to see if there's any really. Uh, critical issues in front of us. The subway issue was sort of uh, water over the dam at this point, but but we will look at th that and see if there's a need for a moratorium and come back to you and suggest that if that seems appropriate. Otherwise, we will take a look at it and report back with some ideas on it. You know, a few years ago, we looked at all signage, went through the signage ordinance and that, and uh, I think it was at the direction of uh, Mr. Ludwig and, and Larry at that point in time but we didn't isolate different areas of what signage is available in different areas. So I think it's a good time to look at it again. I'll move. Refer it back to city manager, PNC. Uh, it's been moved. We've got a speaker here. I didn't intend really to get up, but the more I heard, the more I couldn't stay seated. Um, I'm Joanne Hanover. I live at 1406 Merle Hay Road. And I was looking around for Mike, and I, Ludwig, and I didn't spot him. Um, several months ago, the Board of Adjustment asked to have some updates made in the sign ordinance. And there had been so many things passed that had not been combined. And uh, I asked to be notified when it was ready. But the last time I talked to Bill Gray, 
he didn't have it. Um, one of your council members told me what was happening, and I've been very patient. It's been a long time. So I just ask that somebody find out where that stands. You're talking about a citywide ordinance? Yeah. yeah. Good. Because we can't look at it if they don't yeah. have it ready, and I know they're very busy. I'm not Julie, being critical. Julie, our staff in the back right now will contact you right now. We'll, we'll, okay. we'll get the information to you either tonight or we'll call you <laughs> okay, tomorrow. Okay, that, so. that and, would and be fine. You give it to me too, would you? And Mr. Mayor, of course, we'll give it to well, you. Well, <laughs> I think you all know that I represent the revitalization of uh, the Merle Hay neighborhood, and signs are huge issue in our neighborhood. You've got a few signs out there. I know. And I, like I say, I'm not prepared. I have pictures to show you when it comes up, but uh, oh. it's a real problem. And I'm sure Mr. Meyer has the same problem on East 14th. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Joanne, thank you very much. I appreciate your comment. Um, so I'm assuming that the, uh, the motion includes the citywide sign ordinance. Yes. Mr. Mayor, you probably remember when Mr. Velasquez was in it. We met on this. Uh, I don't think it was ever brought to resolution, though. Yep. All right. Um, seven yes. Seven yes. Thank you for bringing that up, Ms. Hensley. Uh, we could add a motion to adjourn. Been moved. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. We sit adjourned. Thank you all for attending. <laughs>